because um, he was served, didn't appear, and uh, things haven't changed from um, the temporary order. Okay, I understand. All right, that's it for today. You can get a copy of this. Either you can come by and get it in person or you can get it from, uh, you can get it online. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're free to leave the Zoom call. Hello, hello, hello. Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago, as usual, where the Wi Fi usually works. Let's do this so, thing. Let's go back to Yes. Okay. So, um, okay. So I'll make a record there that you're here. You said there's service. Um, so again, if you can get proof of that service in, I'll enter a default, but you can leave right now. If we don't get it you, and it doesn't show up, you may want to um, talk with your client. I'll allow you to renote it or, re, you know, it'll still be an open case until the order's entered and just renote it for a temporary hearing and get them served if, we don't get the service. Does that make sense? That makes sense. And I just so the court knows, I emailed once again, and our process server said they will have proof of service to us by today. So I'm hoping that I can get that filed today. Okay. And so once you do that, then the, the civil clerk will contact me and we'll enter a default. Thank you. You and Ms. Thale must, may go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Your Honor. Sure. All right, so we have three cases left where both parties are here. We're going to have hearings on these. And then um, this is live. They just looked promising. We'll start with um, are you, you Mr. McKenna? Is that correct? Why don't you come on up and take a seat there? If if they aren't good, it's Natalie's fault. Yep. Despite the fact that she so has nothing I to do with it. You filed a response in here. And um, at one point you said you were served late, which is true. and and, and all of that but then you filed some stuff too which i've looked at and then my question is you know if you want more time you can have it and so when people complain about service of late service which i get sometimes they'll ask more time to um for uh to respond and so i'm going to give you that opportunity if you want that otherwise we'll just proceed with the hearing now um your honor i don't need it i have nothing to present i okay I posted so, the signs. hang on um, so Mr. Several. Stinton's here and then, yeah. um, my wife's here too, your honor. Okay. You're the petitioner. And so, yeah, yep. Amber, uh, Stinton is also, and then, um, I'll swear you in, I'll hear from you and I'll hear from Amber Stinton also, Amber okay. Lee Stinton, if she yep. wishes to testify, I'll hear from Mr. McKenna and then, um, We'll go from there. Mr. McKenna did file some things. Did you get a chance to look at that? Nope. We had to, we had to certify by mail because we had several people go over there. Uh, Macy okay, so I, 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 I don't. I just ask if my question was only if you saw if you saw the things. No, I have not. Okay. Well, I'll hear from you, and then I'll hear from. Um, and Ms. Stinton, then I'll hear from Mr. McKenna, and then um, I'll have him explain to you what's there. There's some screenshots of some, I don't fully understand either, but you can, uh, I'll hear from you. So Mr. Stinton, could you raise your right hand? You swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. Um, how is it you need an order against Mr. McKenna? Yeah. First of all, I, I tried to get off registration, so he caught wind of that. This was a case that happened 23 years ago, and uh, it, it was against his wife. She was underage, and uh, some consensual stuff happened. There was no rape. There was no molestation. So then he went around and posted signs all around my neighborhood saying I was a molester, put my address on there, all my information, kept doing it. I finally caught him, got pictures of him, caught him up on the pole was on dispatch. My, my wife was on the, the phone with 911 at the time that we, we had a conference, met him. 
And uh, he was sitting up there and posting signs and Thank you. said he wasn't going to stop. He was threatening toward me, gestures. His dog got out of the truck. I got pictures of his truck, his car, him, all this stuff. And it took me a while to catch him. But I have 13 signs which have razor blades on them. And I have pictures and police reports. They've come over here five times. And uh, I just, I don't understand why he's doing that. I know his, his wife is is the victim in this case, but I just don't understand why he would come after me. I never contacted her, never even seen her for 23 years. So for him to come out here and maliciously do that, it's pretty bad. Razor blades almost cut my wife's hand. I mean, that's pretty bad. Um, and then Ms. Stanton, is there anything you wish to say at this time? Is she there with you, Mr. Stanton? No, she's on her own Zoom call at work. So I don't know if she has her microphone on. Or I don't see it. There's someone Samsung SM, and then there's someone Observer Support. I don't know who, the, yeah. who either of those folks are. It's probably Samsung. She's doing it on her phone. She's actually working right now. Okay. Is, is, Ms. Stanton, are you there? Do you wish to testify? Are you on the Samsung? If not, I, I, don't have I am. To, I, hello. Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Sorry. I'm okay. here. Anything you'd like yes. to say at this time? Um, I just, I'm, I I'm feel like that, I'm going to have to swear you okay. in before you do, if you wish to. Okay. okay do you yeah. swear? Do you swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You can put your hand down. And okay, then, thank you. Uh, go ahead. Um, so I'm just, Mr. McKenna, um, I don't understand why he's doing this, um, but I am fearful that if he feels the need to take law into his own hands, that where where is the stopping point this is 23 years we've never contacted him or his family have no desire no need um this is the home that my children come home to my son comes home to boot camp to my granddaughter is there um i'm concerned that people will see these signs and want to take the law into their own hands and hurt my home and threaten my safety by his actions and I, I don't understand why um, he just doesn't need to be in our area. He has no business there but to harass us in my home. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. McKenna, could you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth? Yes, Your Honor. You can put your hand down. What's your response to their request? for an order um i posted some signs um i was basically i mean my intent was i've known about what he did to my wife when she was 13 and he was 24 for a long time and never cared until we got a letter um and that's what the the information i posted was the emails donald cease is the guy that gave my wife and the other victims the opportunity to contest getting his record sealed right and it it brought up a lot of trauma um all the victims had met and talked and they're doing a series of therapy now because of it and we were just kind of fearful that he was going to get his record sealed so i had some signs made and and posted them just so people would know it was public information posted right off of the sex offender registry site yeah, Thurston and County already. I posted started. signs. Okay, and, so just one, don't interrupt, please. And uh, so I just took those signs, posted them, and I never attached razor blades. I was looking at um, the paperwork that I got, and in here he gives some detail of it and specific dates and says on November 18th, the day that they they approached me, almost caused an accident swerving through the intersection to come at me. And I said, I had nothing to say. And they, she filmed the entire thing, which I'm, I'm curious why they didn't submit that as evidence because they filmed the entire thing. I tried no. to get to my truck and away from him because I wanted no altercation. I just wanted to post public information for public safety. Wow. Um, but it says that they found the sign after I left that they took the sign off the pole and then one out of the grass had, they called the cops, talked with the cops. When they took those signs, I left and then go on to say later on the 25th, I'll be with you. Signs out, 
of her. I'm shocked, honestly. I'm listening. Um, that she took those signs out of her car, and that's when she noticed there were razor blades on the edges. And so I'm just, I'm not sure how the officers on the 18th didn't see the razor blades or how she didn't notice razor blades in her car for eight days driving around with it. I never attached razor blades to it. I just, I stapled it to a, a sign, a pole, a pole is all I did. So it was, it's, kind of, it's contradictory and it's in writing and it's signed and sworn by him on this paperwork. Right. Okay. And so, I mean, it's, the, the facts are right there. So where do you where do you live? I live in Centralia, but my brother lives. Um, I don't know. I could look it up on a map. About no, I mean, where, do you know four where, streets down? Where does from. Mr. Stinton live? Just in city. I'm not looking for an address. Uh, of Rochester. So miles from you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but my brother that works for me live that I pick up every morning lives about a quarter of a mile, and I drive down Highway 99 right past his house every day. Did you? When did you learn this? Learn what? Where he lived and to drive by him and all of that. Oh, when we got the letter in uh, January, and that's what that email was from Donald Cease that I put in there. Um, but I mean, okay. Because so, we were told, my wife being the victim. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand where, that. Where I guess. Lives. Yeah, and d that's fairly. My understanding is that's fairly typical. People yeah. register for a period of time. They comply with certain conditions they can ask to be relieved of that obligation which apparently happened when that happens other people involved in the case get notice of that which they're entitled to um and i guess i'm having trouble understanding the value of it just seems to me, and, it, and your wife has the opportunity to be heard and make her voice known to the people who are uh, making that decision. Certainly, she has that right and opportunity. Um, and she should take full take advantage of that, however she she's fit. I guess I'm just having trouble seeing the value of after all this time running around putting those signs up. Your Honor, may I say something? No. Okay. I guess just being a father of okay. three young kids and right. seeing what it did to my wife, I just wanted to post public information. No. I didn't intend to hurt him in any way. I just wanted to make aware. Yeah. And the the you request did, but it's understandable. To get his record sealed did get denied. Okay. And and that, so yeah, I, I don't. I've, that's not. That's again. That's not in front of me here right now. The only thing that. Uh, needs to me. The only thing that's in front of me is this um, whether or not an order should be granted or not. But it just strikes me that you doing this is almost kind of like trying to put out a fire with gasoline, if you know what I mean. Let's take a terrible, and again, 23 years, but you know what? Trauma lasts. It does there, Mr. And I don't know anything about that other than what's been told to me here in court, you know, but trauma can last that long. It can. Uh, I know that just from my experience on this job. And um, and like I say, stirring this all up again, I think there's a chance of basically bringing all that back up again. Mr. Stanton, you wanted to say something? Yeah, Your Honor, uh, he's making this case out to be something it's not. If you, I, I, I tried to get him a copy of this case. His wife was not molested. His wife was not raped. Okay, so I don't want to, we're not, we're not litigating that case. Okay. That was 23 years ago. The only okay. thing in front of me here right now is whether or not an order should be entered. The police were, the, the cop came over and saw the razor blades on the sign, took pictures of them. That's what we submitted to you guys. So that's a major deal. I, I don't understand why he's trying to justify that. And it didn't sit in my wife's car for that long. We pulled them down every single time we put them up. Because the community is telling me around here that he's doing it. Uh, Not to mention I went out and bought cameras. So anything further? Um, the last sign I posted was on the 18th, and, and like I said, 
he said they had the cops there. And I, I don't understand how the last sign I posted, cops were present. They would have noticed razor blades on it. And they, I mean, he, and he just they did. like, and he said on the 18th, they took them and then she took them out of her car on the 25th. That was seven days after. So they sat in her car for that long. No, they didn't. It, it's in the paper. Your Honor, I own this house outright. I just don't want him around me anymore. I don't know why he's going out of his way to do this. Well, um, I don't know either, but... Um, I did destroy the rest of the science. Okay. I had four more. Yeah, my sister's involved too, just to let you know, Your Honor. I'm already pursuing that with a, an attorney. So here's the thing there, Mr. Stinton, you know, uh, and, I, and I think we had this conversation there and um, when you were in front of me when the temporary order uh, was entered, you know, these anti-harassment petitions is um, one of their, some people call them uh, orders of protection or no contact orders, and they're designed to keep people away from um, you know, some people just won't leave, won't leave other people alone for a variety of reasons. They need to come to court and say, look, I need you to keep this, need to keep this guy away from me or more woman, well, this person away from me um, or calling me at all hours, you know, uh, come showing up at my door, following me around, stalking me and, and all of that. And um, that's really not what's happening here. Um, you know, we can sit around and, you know, Mr. Uh, McKenna does have some some free speech if he's uh, um, a, a opportunity, and so then the issue is: is this constitutionally protected? What he's doing because he's not contacting you, he's not calling you, he's not showing up at your door, he's not he's doing something you don't like, which I understand. He's doing something which, in my view, wouldn't seem to be all that helpful for uh, the recovery of his wife. But I'm not an expert in that regard, just because it dredges up all these things again from uh, um, so many years ago, but it is good that she's getting therapy and counseling for that, which is a long way of saying, based on what's been presented, um, you know, you know, I, I can't really find that, um, and I hear what you say about the razor blades, I can't really make a, I'm not going to make a finding on that one way or the other, um, even if that's so, it's not necessarily, that might be, uh, um, I mean, he's not throwing razor blades at you. And, and it, even if that's the case, I mean, if it's, that's a pretty big stretch. So at this point, and again, I'm not going to, I'm the, the request for an order are going to be denied because I don't think it's, you know, we can sit around and debate all day long about it, whether it's appropriate, whether it's not. And I know there's people are watching. Some people might think it is. Some people think, no, he's way out of line. Yep. Um, but it's not, it's, it's, you know, based on the definition of harassment within the statute, it doesn't fit that. So the order is going to be denied. I heard him say that all the signs have been destroyed. Hope that's the case and hope that we can go forward here where you won't have to put up with this anymore. But um, that's what I'm going to do here for today. Ms. Stanton, okay. Mr. I will see counsel, Your Honor, and I will go after him in a different way. Okay, you so, can. Our CW numbers. I'll, the only thing in front of me here right now is what I'm doing, and that's what I'm done here for today. And you're okay, free to no speak problem. to an attorney about that, of course. No problem. I got deep pockets, so I'll get them. You both can. Um, you know, I I don't. Again, I I'll set the same set of questions. You know, I was struck by your last comment. I'll get him. You know, and uh, um, you know, and he I doesn't need to come after. Like, I, 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 just let me talk for a second here, for a second. I think you both need to kind of look at yourself and think: Okay, is this going to make things better, or is this going to make things worse? And um, you know, you might want to have that internal conversation yourself, Mr. Stenton. Well, I started my name. around with Mr. McKenna, and again, I'm, just, I'm not looking for a response there, okay. but um, again, you. You all have a choice to make here. You can kind of just let, you know, move beyond this and leave each other alone, or you can continue to make efforts to use your words. I'm going to get him. Um, I'm not sure that 
and again, you can do what you want. I'm not making any orders going forward. The only thing I'm to do is, de is denying one, but uh, um, I think people need to take a look at themselves and figure out where they're going from here. But for that, uh, um, and you can take that for what it's worth, and uh, that's it for today. Well, damn. And you're all free to leave the Zoom call. We started strong. Not funny. But that, that was an interesting one. I I did not see any of that coming. And you're free to go. Thank you, Your Honor. You have a wonderful day. And the judge's ruling and assessment was spot on. I mean, it just doesn't fit the statutory definition. We have a First Amendment. That's that. Having said that, it's, it's probably a dumb idea. Um, but he doesn't have an order. He just see. He just said that. And then Amira Addy and Simon Greenwood will be next. Ms. Addy, can you come on the Zoom call, please? Yes, I'm here. Um, Mr. Greenwood, Greenwood. I got, uh, and I should have identified this earlier. Someone here identified as observer support. What case are you here for? Uh, my name is Lisa, and I'm here as a support person for Desi Thorne. Okay, you can go ahead and mute back up when we call that case. That's not this case. Oh, good Lord. Okay, so Ms. Uh, Mr. Greenwood, could you come on the um, screen, got, please? We've got uh, purple I'm hair. I'm working on it. Uh, apparently, I have to go to settings to choose another camera. <laughs> um, which I only have one camera, so I'm We've not sure. An emotional support person. And I don't know where settings is. I'm kind of We've got technical place. issues. This has got to be gold. Eventually, th this call is going to come through for me. I Where can feel up my bones. Well, I'm not at your computer. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Um, do I need to? Oh, okay. Wait. I think I found it. <laughs> that about covers it right there. <laughs> I didn't find it. Is it? Um... There you are. <laughs> hey, hey, there we go. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. It's a green screen for. <laughs> You're kind of not using it, brother. So, um, Addy, <laughs> could you raise your right hand, please? Yes. You swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. You can put your hand down. Um, do you folks work together? It's my first question. Yes. Um, we okay. did. I got fired. On okay, the so I bet, I bet Mr. Greenwood, I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak when the time comes. Right now, I just I'm talking to Ms. Addy, and then I'll give you an opportunity to speak. But uh, um, I can only speak to one person at a time. So, Ms. Ms. Addy, um, I'll hear from you. On um, I did review. You filed some things, including a fair amount of screenshots of text. I like the conversations, idea. which I some of which, a lot of which aren't with you, but uh, um, I'll hear from you on why you need an order against Mr. Greenwood. Um, this situation has been going on for almost a year now, and my job has consistently failed to protect my rights with it. Um, they just now are finally starting to look into it more once they found out that I was taking legal action. Um, but the harassment hasn't stopped, even if it's not directed at me now. He still thinks that there's an opportunity for a relationship, even though I've made it clear that there's not and there never will be. Regarding me, and I kind of just felt like I was at a point where I didn't know what else to do. I'm back, baby. <laughs> well, give me a, um, <laughs> tell me what's been happening. How so, has he been I saw the, saw the emails between him and somebody else. I want to know about your experience. Um, about a year ago, he tried to ask me out on a date and I kindly denied him. And then I thought, you know, maybe that would be it. It would be a little awkward, but whatever. But then he tried to offer me money 
saying that he wanted to help me with my situation and I was like no like I don't accept money from people like that's really weird to me um and that was around the time that I made the first report to help each other out here and then after that he just never stopped like he would keep trying to talk uh, to me all the time even though management told him to like kind of stay away from me um and then he would go to my friends asking if they should if he should talk to me even though he was made clear that he should not talk to me um i've made three ethics reports about it over the last year and they moved him departments but he never really stopped like he would stare at me when i was at work i was becoming really uncomfortable it was making the work environment hostile um <clears throat> I just I'm very uncomfortable with everything that's happened and I don't know why it's gone on this long because I said no. All right. Um let me hear from Mr. Greenwood. Yeah, I got to know his response. Uh, Mr. Greenwood, could you raise your right hand? You swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. You can put your hand down. What's your response to what we just heard from Ms. Addy there? Am I saying your name correctly, by the way, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Mr. Greenwood, go ahead. You wanted to say something and you were starting about your work and then I stopped you, but oh, now sorry. is your opportunity to let me know what your position is. Uh, well, work, uh, I applied for a transfer twice to get away from her. Uh, the second time was the 26th to move to a different store. Uh, so I wouldn't have been coworkers anymore. But then on the ninth, the third complaint went through and I got fired, so we're not coworkers at all anymore. Um, but responding to what she said, after the first complaint, uh, on I think it ended on June, uh, the next however many months, I guess actually never at all, did I approach her romantically or ask her out or say anything sexual or flirtatious. Uh, I did, there was a second report, a uh, waiter I got when I asked her why she filed a second report. Because uh, earlier, she had gone around telling all of her friends that she filed another report, and they went up to me to tell me about it. And I don't know what was supposed to be in it, but I had three different people saying, giving me these anecdotes about their friends who got had their lives ruined because of false rape claims. Uh, everyone was telling me I need to file a report against her for filing frivolous reports, uh, which I didn't end up doing. Even her friends were telling me that. Um, so after that second report, I just uh, completely ignored her and stayed like in dispensary room. A little corner of the store uh, and she would sometimes come back there and chat with people and hang out and so I just sort of stood in the corner playing on my phone just to get away from her uh, until a friend of mine saw this and so he said you know I know after the first report you aren't allowed to transfer but you can just go to management and ask for exception so I did I told him I want to change stores they said uh, we can talk to other stores but we have an open in the deli here we know you have a good work ethic we'll give you a 10 percent raise if you move there and so I said fine because I thought the only problem was just hanging out in the dispensing room. Um, so I did that, and it was fine for a few months. And then, oh, before I did that, a week before they gave me the transfer, uh, I did approach her. She was talking about Palestine, and I disagreed with all that she said. And I sort of, that's like sort of my hobby is politics and stuff. So I went up to her, we got in a big argument, and she got really mad. And everyone was telling me, you're going to get fired now, dude. She's going to file another, file another complaint. You're going to get fired. And I don't know if that's the third complaint that got me fired, but regardless, uh, I got out of there. Um, oh, good Lord. Then in January, turning towards the middle or end of January, I should wait. I should backtrack. Christmas Eve, uh, I told Anthony, I texted Anthony to say that, like, because we had left on really bad terms and also maybe a complaint. I told Anthony to say, you know what? It's been a while. Uh, I'd like to just, if I could talk to her somewhere outside of work, we could get closure, settle things down. Uh, and he didn't respond. He came up to me. Uh, that's, he doesn't usually respond in text. He comes up in person. Uh, he came up to me and said, uh, dude, don't do it. Two complaints already. You're insane. This is going to go really badly for you. And I said, no, man, listen, I haven't approached her uh, for months. I have no intention of approaching her. I just want to like, talk things out so we just... There's closure that isn't just like us hating each other. Uh, and then like a minute later, she comes up to me and just says, you know, uh, just something like uh, happy holidays. I said, Merry Christmas. And she goes off. It's like, I don't know what that's about. Uh, 
And then like later she came in on her day off, walked over to the deli, uh, looked at some lunch meat, looked over and stared with a completely blank expression and then walked away, um, which was very weird. She didn't buy anything. I didn't know what that was about. And so I was trying to freak out. And at the same time, I was also, actually a little later, starting in mid-January, early mid-January, I was also behaving erratic towards other people, not, not just those four. Uh, I was getting in fights with my boss. I was ranting to Angie and Delhi. Uh, I was getting in a fight with the ops manager, Jacob. And uh, by the end of the month, I realized from the way people were reacting, uh, Amir was looking really scared. Other people were looking at me like plus pond scum. I was sort of a pariah at the store. I realized I was like spiraling out of control. I don't know what was doing that, if it was stressed or whatever. But at that point, uh, I asked it to transfer stores and I asked, I contacted my psychiatrist about getting, I had been here since I talked to him. I contacted my therapist about uh, getting help. And I went in, uh, applied for a medical leave of absence for mental health, which they gave me. And uh, I figured that would be the end of it. Um, and then on eight days later, on the seventh, uh, I got the restraining order. And then two days later, uh, I got notice from my work that I was fired. Oh, good Lord. What day was that that you was fired? I you think got, it was. Yeah. Sorry? So you got served on the second, did you say? A uh, seventh. Five days ago? Yeah. Um, and then these texts, there's someone named, Ro, is it Rogar or is that, Ro, oh. or is that a different spelling of Roger? It's Roger. It's uh, He spells it differently in Discord because I think it'd be funny or something. I don't know him well enough to know the backstory. All right. So there's a, all right. So again, I'm going to reference those texts in there. Um, frankly, I mean, that gives some insight as to, you know, what you're thinking and, um, you know, reading those things, it's, I can kind of understand why Ms. Addy's kind of concerned. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I'm sorry, first of all, I'm sorry you lost your job. Uh, um, you know, that's a difficult situation. Um, but based on um, her petition, combined with her testimony, your testimony, and the evidence presented, um, I'm going to sign an order, and that order is going to be in place for a year. And my hope is I don't that, know that kind of makes say. things easy for you. For there's a, there's a bright line now. You said you're seeing someone to to help your mental health, which is good. But the line is you're just she's just not a part of your life. She's just not something you you should think about. You understand that? Yeah. Just don't, absolutely. Just, yeah. And so the order is going to be, be effective for one year from today. Um, you're not to contact her. I'm guessing the texts are pretty, are pretty bad. But from what I'm just hearing in testimony, I, I can't decide who to believe. This big dummy thinks that you should talk about uh, politics at work. That you're you not to cause her any harm. You're not to contact her. Clueless. And that's through third parties also. And so if you're sending texts, if you're in a text ring, you can still have contact uh, with former co-workers and all that, but she is not to be a part of the conversation. Do you understand that? Because someone receiving that might perceive that as your attempt to contact her through a third person. Do you understand that? Yeah, absolutely. So any sort of third party contact is um, uh, forbidden. You're not to come within a thousand feet of her, her residence or her place of employment. You know where she uh, works there now. And so, like I say that, uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. I wanted to say something. Yes, uh, her place of employment is uh, right, like a few minutes away from my parents' house. Uh, well, what do I mean a few minutes? I mean, yep, it's. I could spend. Minutes. Oh, uh, I was saying, going to say, uh, it could take an extra ten minutes to go a long way around. Um, well, how, as the crow flies, how far is this? The which Walmart is this? It is the Oasis neighborhood market. Uh, is that the one out on uh, on college and near college and Yelm Highway? Yes, I think so. Okay, and so um, so if I stay on the arterial, 
It, I don't, it might be within a thousand so where, feet. Where, where more or less do your parents live? Uh, your mother, so, say your mother? Or? Yeah, my mother and father. Uh, it's, do they live off of college? Right, pretty close. Or off, off of, of Yelm Highway. Wait, oh, yes, Yelm Highway. Sorry, I don't know. Okay, so the, if you get to college, you hit Yelm Highway, you can come mm -hmm. back towards Olympia or out towards Yelm. Are they um, out towards Yelm or are they back towards Olympia off of Yelm Highway? Uh, I think back towards Olympia. Okay, well, can't you just go through Olympia, go out Yelm Highway, then you never even make it to that, that Walmart. Of course you can. Which ones? If I go to them normally, I would go down at the T junction, right? There's the T junction. Is that college in Yelm? No, college is where the Safeway is. Oh, okay. okay. The T junction at the end of Yelm Highway. Ruddle. That's Ruddle going one way. Ruddle goes to the left and uh, um, to yep. the right. That heads Yelm Highway off to Yelm. About yeah. the way I see it. Okay, so if I go down Yelm, I, this I go down Ruddle to go down to Yelm, and it passes right. by Walmart, and I think it's like I don't know. 300 feet, 500 feet. Can I still go that way as long as I just pass by and don't go into the parking lot or anything? Or is that? Oh, dude, stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Yeah, if you if it's down, if I understand you correctly, you can go through Lacey and come out and Ruddle and just come the back way and then you never go past it. Okay. And I'm confident in your ability to navigate that. Thank you. So again, don't come within a thousand feet of uh, her, her workplace or her residence. Uh, service isn't required because you're appeared and you can get a copy of this off the Thurston County District Court, uh, Court website. Yes, but she's got the uh, and, um, preferred stances in life, for today. so it's okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. And Ms. Addy, you can get a copy uh, of this order off the District Court website also. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. I'm dying to see the the, the text. I mean, the, he was odd. No two ways about it. But I mean, I don't know how to put this nicely. I find it hard to believe someone gets fix, fixated on her. Mr. Greenwood, you're free to leave the Zoom call. Just All right, to be you. blunt. And she did show up with purple hair and an emotional support person. So I, I'm leaning against her all day long. Until so that leaves uh, Ms. Thorne. You seem pretty Ms. weird. Ward. Can you come on the Zoom call, please? <laughs> that, those, that's the truth. Yes. Yes. There. A another good summary. Thank you. <laughs> Just a minute, Your Honor. I'm having problems with my uh, camera, actually. Um, in just a second. <sighs> I know I apologize. I mean, there's there a lot of guys have no options, and it's just, and they're awkward. Apparently, he did enough in text to to get this judge on board with it, and this judge is pretty darn reasonable in my estimation. So I'm. I'm I'm going to assume that it was the right call. I am very sorry. Sorry, that's the camera off of my computer where um, I use the one that's right on my desk. So I have to Agreed, but some guys are so awkward they don't know that. Okay, I'll just use the one off my camera. Or my computer. Okay. I wouldn't say always. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, I mean, sometimes. Okay, so um, Ms. Thorne, could you raise your right hand, please? You swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. And then how is it you need an order against Ms. Ward? Um, for at least two years now, uh, Ms. Ward and her, her daughter have been very rude to me, uh, and it has continued to get worse. Um, 
and I decided to get the order after my car was damaged and the kids were throwing rocks and stuff at my windows. And uh, the thing with Miss Ward is she likes to constantly yell out from outside and yell mean things to me. I mean, she even called me a hoe and a loser and told me she can beat my ass. All of that's not on video. That's all just stuff that happened. Um, after the Ma'am, are you a whore? In the rocks in the windows in my truck. Um, she got more aggressive with the. Hang on just a second. Ms. Ward, are you still there? I'm still here. Yeah, I, I need you to be on camera so I know you're listening to all this. I'll give you a chance yeah. to respond in a minute. Okay. Continue on there, Ms. Thorne. Thank you. So it just continued to get worse. She continued to make louder threats at me. Um, then after the rock incident, then we had the incident where her daughter and the, her daughter, her youngest daughter, was putting dog poop on my door, and um, it just got to a point where it was just too much. Even though I mess, I you know, department management knows. They've even tried to uh, facilitate a sit down to where we can talk, and Ms. Ward would even come around for that. Um, so it's just been a lot, and now it's getting worse. And then since I got the temporary order, um, she can, again got worse. And on February 5th, uh, the, I did get the police came out and talked to her, and they have um, filed for a case, and it's been uh, forwarded to the prosecutor, um, where she was sitting on the porch calling me mean names and being threatening and then just turned around and waved at me and said, you crazy white lady, like, this is ridiculous. It's just aggressively getting worse. And our building is only connected through a, um, like a side bridge, a catwalk. So there's no reason for her to be anywhere, you know, her or her kids to be in my side of the store, I'm in my building. Um, but I do know that after the officer came out on February 5th and told her to knock it off, uh, I haven't heard anything from them. So that's nice. And that's the kind of, you know, just anti-harassment, don't talk to me, leave me alone. And um, so that's why I'm asking for the anti-harassment order because I feel that they are not capable of that. All right. Let me hear from Ms. Ward. Um, and Ms. Ward, I will tell you before that, I don't know whether you had a chance to see this or not, but in the file, there's some video and some kids and I, I've never met you. I've never met your kids. Um, some of the video, I think, is there's some yelling coming from what I assume is your apartment, saying some unkind things about Ms. Uh, Thorne. Also, one of the kids, you know, through what I'm looked to me, and again, I don't know whether this was your kid or not, but uh, um, basically threw a, what I think was a rock. It was something that was hard that made a large sound against uh, Ms. Thorne's uh, window. And then those, you know, and the kids were yelling at her, calling her a bunch of unkind things also. And so uh, I just want to let you know, and I don't know whether you had a chance to see that or not, but I did. And, and, and so it, and it uh, looks bad. I'm going to swear you in. Raise your right hand. Do you swear and affirm the information and testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. You can put your hand down. What's your position on her request for the order? Well, <clears throat> this lady has literally called the police on me ever since I moved in. Even the first day I moved in, she called the police on me because she said I was moving in too loud. Um, I've had police come up to my door several times because she accused uh, me of beating my kids. They came to my door. They actually came to the point where they stopped coming because she's called so much in the past few years. This sit down that she's talking about with management never happened because I didn't get a notice of it at all. Because if I did, I would like to sit down too. She's always sitting at her window. She has three, she has chairs at her window and she just looks outside all day. She yells at kids all day. She really records all day. Only thing I do 
I leave my apartment with my boyfriend and I leave. I ride the bus. So how can I stop this woman when I'm on the bus? She has a vehicle. She she sent me, she put a, if she was so scared of me, why did she deliver this paper to my door saying, um, I'm going outside and she's just harassing me? I don't say nothing to this woman. I, oh, yes, it's okay for me to say, hey, stop video recording my kid. I mean, if my daughter is doing something wrong, all of their friends will come upstairs and they would tell me, okay? They do that all the time. I didn't you know did nothing they, about- did, Hang on just a second. Did they tell you they threw a rock at her window? No one ever told me that. So well, I don't know I'm what telling kid you she, that because I saw a kid do it. What, do you know what she looked like? It's hard for me to tell from the video. Okay, well, I will, I've been talking to my kids and telling them to leave that woman alone. She acts like they harass her all the time. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know they come in the house and say, Mom, she's recording us again. Mom, we're just outside playing. She's recording us again. This piece of paper she sent me says, oh, her daughter's outside playing with other kids and being mean to other kids. Kids are kids. Some kids are mean to my kids. My daughter's mean to other kids when they're rude to her. And then she wrote a paper saying that I stopped her and I harassed her when she was walking her dog. I didn't even know this lady had dogs. I just go about my business. I go through the fence over here and I catch the bus. I don't look out for this woman, but you can hear her talk out the window and she's on the phone herself. Now, it's not a crime for me to sit on my porch and watch my clothes because several times this woman has vandalized my clothes. And then if, there, if, if I'm stalking her, then how come there's no video footage of me following her or chasing her as she claims. I don't care nothing about this woman. I would like her to stop sitting out the window and be recording me or saying that I'm at her door harassing her. Where's the proof of me harassing her at her door? And when she said the cops came, I was with my boyfriend. We just walked up the stairs and came to the apartment. We sat down in my room, which is in the far back of my apartment, sat down, and now within two hours later, the cops are knocking at my door saying that I was yelling and screaming at her. And I said, no. And my boyfriend even talked to the police as well. And he was like, okay, I'm going to go talk to her. The police never came back because they know she calls the cops on me all the time for nothing, just for living here, just for breathing, she calls the cops. And my chairs, if I'm harassing her, then how come there's no pictures of, of anything, of me doing anything? She sent a picture to me with a flat tire. Okay, you have a flat tire. What does that have to do with me? The cars are to, when I get down off my porch, the cars are to the right. I go out to the left every time. I come back to the left, go up my stairs, go up my apartment. She's called the police on me so many times for no reason that I don't even like to sit on my porch anymore. Until my clothes started getting vandalized, I caught her two times coming from the washing machine, the, the wash machine room, and my clothes would be opened up, the dryers would be opened up, washing machines would be opened up. So I go wash mine across the street. I don't bother this lady. And if my kids are bothering her, I'm going to keep telling them to stop. And her daughter talks to my daughter. She doesn't know that, but her daughter talks to my daughter. And my daughter asks her daughter, why is your mom doing this? Because her daughter just got recently taken out of her home. Her daughter actually told my daughter she's an alcoholic. She likes to bother people and she doesn't like black people. I knew that from the first day I moved in when the cops came just for me moving in. She acted like I had a cookout and 20 people over here. There was three people helping me move. That was it. I don't, no one's doing nothing to this lady. I don't even care about this lady. I don't even say nothing to this lady. I don't even go to her door or go to her side over there. No one cares for her. I don't care for her. Well, Judge saw a video uh, of you yelling at her. It's all, it's all fake. My boyfriend's with me most of the time. and he, I tried to put up some papers the other day, but I couldn't because I got served late. But I have other witnesses, too. I have about four declarations for other people. Okay. We, when did you get served? Last week on a Monday. All right. What day is today? Probably, but Judge only has one in front of him. Twenty six. 
So, Ms. Thorne, maybe I should have asked this first. You know, I can, I do have the opportunity to give her a chance to respond. She said she was served fairly recently, um, which I'll probably do, and then we can just reconvene on the twenty sixth and see and see what happens. Okay. What's your response to one thing that she told me, which kind of caught my attention, was. Uh, I mean, how many times have you called the police on her? Um, I have called the um, maybe three, four times. But the one I did call once when uh, some of the neighbors were worried because her daughter was screaming. So I just called the police just to let them know, hey, check in on her, and they did. Um, but when she is saying that, uh, the day she moved in, I called the police. I would encourage her to get a copy of that report or that call because I know for a fact that that whole weekend I was away because it was my daughter's wedding. So I encourage her to, yes, please get the police report. Let's turn it in. She doesn't, ma'am, you don't, you don't, you don't need to encourage her to do anything. Oh, okay. you can... I do apologize. So, um, yes. Yeah. Oh, and then when did when did you move in there, Ms. Ward? About three or four years ago, and I thought all the it's, all the police around here know me now because she called so much. There was like forty eight police reports. All right, all right. All right. So here's what we'll do: we'll reset. Hang on, just a minute, ma'am. We'll reissue temporary temporary order remains in place, and then we'll just see where we're at. And I'll give you a chance to respond, Ms. Ward. We'll see where we're at in two weeks. It'll be in front of me, so you won't need to repeat what you've said thus far. Okay. Don't worry, she will. And Ms. Thorne, did you say that um, things have been good since the temporary order was entered? No, it, it's been good since the police officer came out and talked to her. Um, and then he did go and talk to her, and then he came over to my apartment. He saw the videos, and after he saw the videos of what she was doing that night, uh, that's when he asked for a case number, I guess, from dispatch, and let me know it was going to be forwarded to the prosecutor that there was grounds to look at a violation of the anti-harassment order. Um, so maybe, we, uh, do you want the, the case number for that? No, I don't. I just <laughs> wanted to know how things were going. I'm not going to tell people how to run uh, their cases, and um, we'll also see how things go over the next two weeks. We're back on the 26th. Okay, um, thank you. We'll get set for at. Ms. Ward, you wanted to say something? Yes, I just have a question. Is it a crime for me to sit on my porch? Um, well, I don't the answer is no, but um, <laughs> if, there's an, if there's a temporary order in place and you're yelling at people, then yeah, that's a problem. But I don't, I don't want to respond to that. I'm just saying, you know, I'm not, maybe I've said too much already. I'm really not in the advice giving business here, but uh, um, anyway, to answer your question, no, it's no, but you, you kind of depends too. Copies of these temporaries will get sent to you. We'll see you all back here on the 26th. Thank you, okay. Thank you. Well, that's the, that looks like it's that, huh? Well, there you have it. Oh. Okay, Got to adjust my screen. Well, that was fun. <laughs> we went in blind, but there were uh, there were three cases there. There were three cases there and and you know, some of them love exciting and new. I see that. I, I see. I was muted now. I see that. That 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 was fun. That was fun for a blind attempt at a call. We had three cases. All of them were interesting. <laughs> it was a little crazier than I expected. It was it was a little out there today. 
that's always good. All right, all right. Good, good. Uh, I, I guess I'll say it's good to be back in Chicago. <laughs> I guess that's the party line. It's good to be back in Chicago where the Wi-Fi usually works. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon.